The numbers are rolling. Good morning. Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me. Read with me, excuse me, in the authorized version of the scriptures that what we will be looking at today. <laughs> Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow me along. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse. Okay, read along, because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. <laughs> the name of your channel is a very good clue. Mm -hmm. Now, despite <laughs> who I think you may be actually, this video is a response to a question. Now, <laughs> whether you may be who I have a suspicion you might be. Uh, regardless of that, Regardless of that, um, the question in and of itself was a very good question. And I like good questions. I like good questions. And the question was basically, how many Earths are, how many Earths were there? Now, Granny, Granny. I have a little suspicion about the individual channel, who it might actually be. I have my, I have my thoughts on that. <laughs> uh, I'm almost tempted to uh, unblock your main channel. You know the one that you bought all your subscribers for. I'm almost tempted to do that. So you we, you can do away with the little formalities because you think you're so clever. But, that's a different story. The question in and of itself is a good question. In and of itself is a very good question. And I would like to address that. Okay? And the question, like I said, was basically, how many Earths have there been? And some of you are like, Brad, what are you talking about? This rolls around within the gap theory thing. Okay? Now, the question in and of itself, I'm not going to name the channel, I'm not going to even reference it because I saw it, and there were just a few things, like I said, that was like, hmm, okay. But, like I said, the question is good, and it was basically a question that's like, well, how many Earths, Earths have there been? The gap theory adherence, like uh, Bullinger, you know, the Shepherd's Chapel people, okay, they, they believe, um, uh, I, I, hey, look, if you're offended by my chuckling, I do apologize. Uh, the gap theory is ridiculous. The question was not actually a gap theory question, but it had a little element in there because, you know, well, how many years? Gaps, gap theory says that in Genesis chapter 1, come on, Genesis chapter 1, we're going to read verses 100 verse 5. Now, there have been videos on the channel here where this has been addressed. The serpent seed doctrine and the lost tribes, I believe, are the two videos where we actually address this. But we're going to address it again because you're only as relevant as your latest video. And the Lord has given your servant quite a few videos to do. So, I'm going to address it here. All right? But the gap theory teaches that... <laughs> That between verses 1 and 2, between verses 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1, that there's millions and billions and trillions of years. Hence the gap theory. Okay? The gap theory. And they have a couple, and especially Bullinger. Uh, you know, he's the guy who did the companion Bible, which uses the authorized version. Uh, that, that guy's crazy. And the disciples of Bullinger are Shepherd's Chapel, 
who also use the authorized version, but they are their own standard because they go to a corrupt uh, lexicon thingy like in Strong's to do the Greek and the Hebrew and whatnot, and they, they don't rightly divide. They kind of rightly divide the word of truth, but not truly. They're, they're, they're crazy. Stay away from them. But the question is, about verses 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1, that there's a gap of millions and billions and trillions of years. And that's how some of these creations can come around. It's like, well, yeah, the earth is millions and billions of years old. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay? No, it isn't. But let's get to it. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, we will read verses 1 out of verse 5 here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Now, the Shepherd's Chapel guy goes deep on the void. They make a big to-do about this word void, and they go to the Hebrew, and it's like, the minute, that, you don't have to do that. We, okay, this is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, Okay. So you don't need to go. Those were stepping stones to arrive at the perfect standard, the authorized version, okay? Okay, the minute you got somebody saying the Hebrew and the Greek, which one? There are lots of uh, renderings of the Hebrew and of the Greek. Which one? Always respond with that. Always respond with, or the originals. Oh, here we go again. The originals that uh, Moses, David, and... Paul wrote, right? They don't exist anymore because they wore out because they were used. Okay? But the, the, the Shepherd's Chapels guy make a very big to-do about the word void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, capital S Spirit, moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? In verses 1, 2, and 3, we see the Godhead in action. We see God, we see the Spirit, and we see in verse 3, and God said, God said, spoke, okay? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be light, and there was light. And you can tie, you can tie that in with First John, uh, not First John, John chapter 1, okay? But, now, in the other videos, I'm sure they are the Lost Tribes and the Serpent Seed Doctrine. And see, that's another clue, okay? Because when you get involved with the Gap Theory thing and the Serpent Seed Doctrine, a part of the Serpent Seed Doctrine says that some of the Lost Tribes, the Lost Tribes, are in England. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I really do. But you never can tell. Those are, those are some striking clues. I <laughs> think you're so clever. But Second uh, Peter chapter 3. Now, in Bullinger's notes, I'm not using Bullinger's companion thing. That No. The text is good because it's the scripture. The notes are kind of... Uh -huh. And yes, I'm using the Schofield, but I'm not using the notes, okay? I'm not. I, I wanted to use a bigger one, and besides, I, I alternate like you needed to know that. But here's something that they like to do. They like to go to 2 Peter. Come on. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. And here's what they like to do. Okay. And the thing is that with uh, the gap theory, they say that God destroyed the first earth during the gap because there was a war between Satan and the angels and stuff like that. And there are all kinds of doctrinal problems with that. Okay? Because, number one, if there was, as the gap theory adherents say, between verses uh, 1 and 2 here in uh, Genesis chapter 1, then that would mean death was before uh, the Garden of Eden. That means, that would mean that Satan brought death into the world. And people like to argue, well, Satan did. Satan tempted. Satan did not hold a gun. Never forget that. But they like to go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. 2 Peter, not 1 Peter, Brad. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. 
For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the scriptures, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, the world, the world, don't look at me, look at the scripture, the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Verse 7. But the heavens and earth which are now, which are now, by the same word, the scriptures, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Okay? What is this a reference on to? This is a reference on to Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7, okay? Listen, if you want to believe the gap theory, that's your problem. That is your problem. That's heresy and it's not true, okay? But uh, Genesis chapter 7, verses 17 on to verse 24. Genesis chapter 7, verse 17 on to verse 24. And the flood was 40 days upon, upon, the earth, upon the earth. <clears throat> and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increasingly and increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went up upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Cover. Okay, this is the flood. And when the floods went down, it's like, well, where are all the wa flood waters go? The, the oceans? Okay? All the flood waters are in the oceans. It's like, come on, bro. Dude, there are like crevices that go like miles down, apparently. Okay? There's a lot of water in the oceans. Okay? The flood water didn't dissipate or whatnot. As some of it went up into uh, space or the atmosphere or what. Spiders went up into the atmosphere or whatnot. You know, I believe that water came jettisoning up out of the earth as well as he opened up the, wa the, the uh, windows of heaven. Okay, it was a twofold thing. But the waters didn't go anywhere. They're still here. They're in the oceans. Okay, but anyway. All right. <clears throat> Verse 19. And the waters... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Are we getting... Uh, okay. And the waters prevailed and were increasing... Were, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. And all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth and Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Now, there are people who believe in that whatever. Okay? All right? That, I'm losing my place here. <laughs> in what we just read in Genesis chapter 7, okay? I want, I, I, I'd like you to show me in Genesis chapter 7 what we just read here. Okay? Please, show me in here, in Genesis chapter 7, where does it say anything that God destroyed the actual earth itself? Show it to me. Show it to me. Please. Where is it in Genesis chapter 7, the flood, which is 2 Peter chapter 3, is making a reference onto, where does it say anything that God destroyed the actual earth itself? Come on, you can say it, it's okay. It doesn't. It 
doesn't. Okay, and now go back to 2 Peter chapter 3. Okay, come on. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verses 5 on verse 7 again. Uh, let's go, let, let's, uh, yeah, 5 on verse 7. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the scriptures, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished and we just read the account the world that then was uh, you know in first john chapter 2 it says love not the world and the things of the world there is no scriptural evidence whatsoever that suggests that God destroyed the actual physical earth. We just read in Genesis chapter 7, verses 17 on to verse 24, okay, that what God destroyed was everything on the earth. And the flood, when it receded, shaped a Grand Canyon and did, all, you know, the world that we have after the flood. Uh, there is nothing in Scripture that says that God destroyed the actual physical earth especially in genesis it's not there it's not there friends it's not okay what is peter talking about he's talking about well look at it whereby the world that then was before the flood and why was that genesis chapter 6 genesis chapter 6 all right verses oh uh Let's read Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. There God will put, put an eventual lifespan limit <laughs> on man. Okay, not right away, but gradually. Okay, and let me see. Uh, let's go from verses 5 on to verse 7 in Genesis chapter 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Okay, man. Okay. Now people, well, the earth was uh, cursed for man's sake. Yes. Yes. But there is no evidence whatsoever to support your theory that God destroyed the first earth in a gap that isn't there. There's no evidence because it's not, not true. Okay, it's not true. Okay, well, let's continue. And God saw the wickedness of man that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart, and again repented. Oh, God had to repent. Uh, it's turning and see grief, grieve. This is the first appearance of the word too, by the way. Okay, so turning, grief, okay. God's not a sinner. God never sinned. Okay? Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. God says nothing about actually destroying the actual physical earth in the flood. And there is zero, zilch, zip, nada, scriptural evidence to support that there is, number one, a gap in verses 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1 that supports millions and billions and trillions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. That's nonsense. That's crazy. I'm sorry, that's stupid. That's stupid. And see, if you're trying to justify a gap theory that doesn't exist, to say that the earth is millions and billions of years old, yea, hath God said. Okay? And, you know, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm saying the gap theory is, is ridiculous. Okay? It is absolutely ridiculous. It's stupid. Okay? There's no evidence to support a gap theory. And they, like I said, they like, uh, I mean, even Bulger himself, he goes, he points to 2 Peter chapter 3. But in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 on verse 7 again, For this they willingly are ignorant of that the world word of 
that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was, the pre-flood world, okay, being overflowed with water, perished. Not the actual physical earth itself. God destroyed all, you know, man and beast and the, the birds and the fowls and stuff like that. Not the fish. But okay, that's what God destroyed. Not the earth itself. No. No. Not at all. Okay. Let's continue. But the heavens and the earth which are now after the flood earth that we are on the same one from the beginning of the creation that we are on right now there wasn't an earth that got destroyed between genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 that a lot for millions and billions of years <laughs> that, that's crazy that's crazy Man, woman, <laughs> Bollinger right? That that's that's insane. <laughs> well, then why don't you just come around and say, well, what is it? Theistic evolution? That God used evolution? What? <laughs> okay, but the heavens and the earth were seven which are now, after the flood, the post-flood world that we are living in today, okay? By the same word, the scripture are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, okay? And what, go back to Genesis now. Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 unto 22. This is after the flood subsided and the, went into the, the after the flood, okay, the Grand Canyon and the mountains, and all that stuff was formed muy rápido, okay, muy rápido, not billions and trillions of years. That's crazy nonsense, okay, but they were formed muy, muy rápido, okay, very quickly, okay, because of all that water, okay, and they're in the seas and the oceans, okay, that's where they're at. So after that, and the ark rested on the mountains of Arat, verses 20 on the verse 22. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living, everything living as I have done. God never destroyed the earth. <laughs> he never destroyed it. He destroyed everything on it. He never destroyed it at all. There wasn't a gap of millions and billions and trillions of years in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 under verse 2, where he destroyed the earth because of rebellion of Satan and there was death. If that were the case, then you got a problem because death comes before the Garden of Eden. And that throws the entirety of Scripture out of line. Okay? But let's continue. While the earth remaineth, the one that is post-flood, what he's talking about right there, seed time and harvest and cold and heat, and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Okay? Now, this, this thing about the gap theory about Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 2 again, okay? That, that argument that, okay, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, between there is the gap of millions and billions, whatever, and the, their argument is that there is a war in heaven and they take out of context the thing that's in Revelation, as I once did, thinking that had already happened. Okay, ouch. No, no, that's future events. Okay, nothing in Revelation has happened or already happened. That's for future during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, okay, okay. See, that's a, it's a, a bane <laughs> of Catholicism to say that the events of uh, Revelation already happened. Okay? That, that's bad. But see, 
if it were like the um, gap theory adherents claim it to be, then we have a big problem. Because Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And at our Lord's second coming, there, he's not destroying the earth at his second coming. That no, 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 that's, that's not how that works. Okay, that's not how that works. There is a smoking gun surefire text that we will point, go to eventually, but we're, we're going through this. Wh whoever you actually are is actually irrelevant. Okay, the question in and of itself that you asked was good. It's a good question. I like those, even though I have my suspicions of who you might actually be. Okay, if I'm wrong, great. If I'm not, I won't say anything. <laughs> but Romans chapter 5, verses 12 on verse 21. Wherefore has by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, here's the problem. If there in the gap theory idea was a war between Satan and the angels or they had a lot of formula, death would have been before this, wouldn't it have? And scripture tells us plainly, as we are going to see, um, who brought death into the world? Satan did. Satan tempted it. Satan didn't force it. Man chose to disobey. Okay? The Garden of Eden was all works. Okay? Don't believe these sleazy believists. Okay? Don't. Please. But if that were the case, then death comes before the disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Then you have a problem with this. It doesn't work because it's not true. The gap theory is insanity. Okay? Let's continue. For until the law was in the world, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where, when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, unmerited favor, which is by one man Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, <clears throat> But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Man brought death into the world. Man did. And if it is as these guys who believe in the gap theory, with the millions and billions of years between one and two and a war with Satan, then man didn't bring death into anything. You would have death before the Garden of Eden. Uh, dear, dear friends, we call that heresy. We call that heresy. Okay? That's heresy. Let's continue. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. You can't read this and come away with the, with the thinking there's a gap between verses 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1 that allowed for millions and billions of years. That's crazy, man. That's absolutely crazy. Okay? Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience... Many were made sinners. It was all works in the Garden of Eden. Okay? 
the sleazy believist heretic says it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Ay, ay, ay. For it's by one's man, one man's disobedience. It was works in the Garden of Eden. Okay? But, okay? For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, now, let's, now let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Okay, let's continue. In the beginning, we're reading to verse 5. In the beginning, God created, created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit, capital S, of God moved upon the waters. Even Schofield himself kind of hints that he tilted that way towards the gap theory. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> anyway. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness distinction. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Question! How could it be the first day if there was an earth before that that allowed it for millions and billions of years? Well, that's the new earth after... Where? Where does it say that God destroyed the physical earth anywhere? Show it to me. It's not there. It's not there. These people that want to believe in that gap theory, whatever, they take out of context in like 2 Peter chapter 3 and the thing of the flood. God did not destroy the physical earth. He didn't. Okay? He destroyed everything on it in the flood. There is not a gap between Genesis chapter 1 and 2 for millions and billions and trillions of years. Okay? All right? It's just nonsense. That's not there. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Now, in the chance that I am wrong, and I hope I am, but I would not be surprised if I'm not. <laughs> if I'm wrong about my suspicions, I apologize. But if I'm not, you know what I think. And you know where I think you should go sometime really soon. But anyway, Isaiah 66, verses 15 on to verse 24. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. This is talking about a future event in Isaiah chapter 66. He, it's making a reference onto the second coming and what is coming with the great white throne of judgment and stuff like that, okay? This, in Isaiah chapter 66, is not God destroying any earth, okay? Not, I mean, presently. Presently. Okay? All right? Let's read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Okay? For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Plead, not like oh please, like a like a lawyer pleading your guilty cause or your guilt. It's like okay, like a lawyer, you know, being a prosecutor kind of thing. Okay, and with his sword. Okay, let's continue. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come 
that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Pul, and Lud, that draw the bowl, bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar so off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, sat the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also take for them priests and Levites, for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make, okay, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. So right here, we have evidence that there is going to be an actual new heaven and a new earth. Okay? Okay? Now, is it a regeneration of the old? We'll find out. But I'm going to, we're going to see, we're going to see, I'm not going to spoil it. Let's continue. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And again, in the, uh, in the uh, kingdom of heaven, about, uh, again, Amos chapter 9 and Zechariah chapter 14. Look at that. Yep, see? There it is. At least Zechariah chapter 14 is in the margin in this, at least. Okay, Zechariah chapter 14, verses 17 on verse 21. Okay, talking about the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die. Meaning that in hell... You know, the worm dieth not, okay? Neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Verse 24, talking about, you know, the lake of fire, you know. And interestingly enough, Bullinger believes in soul annihilationism. That and, 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 and you know, some guys were coming around to uh, doing a veiled form of Catholicism, you know, like uh, the lake of fire is a purgatory to get people saved eventually. And, and you know, my dear friend, who I actually think is a, is a saint, what are you doing entertaining that guy? What? Haven't you got kicked in the stones enough, son? Oh. Anyway, anyway, love you. Anyway, okay. Anyway, now, now. Revelation chapter 21. We got company coming over. So <laughs> I'm going to hear about this. It's like, Brad, right here. Okay. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 on verse 8, and then we'll be done. Because like I say, we got people coming over. Now, Revelation chapter 21. This is after, this is after the great white throne of judgment where Satan, death, hell, sin are all cast into the lake of fire, burning forever and ever. This is the final seventh dispensation in Scripture. No more sin. No more sin. Sin is gone. Sin is gone. The seven, seventh and final dispensation as I teach. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Are you looking at that? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. That, that was a great question. But for those of you who believe in the gap theory... For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Dear friends, we are still on the first earth. It says so right there. And if it's not, but if the gap theory were true, 
then that's not true, is it? Come on, you can say it, no. The gap theory is heresy. We script right there, right there. This, we're still on the first earth, okay? We're still on the first earth. And I, John, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, and the wages of sin is death, Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Okay? And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the, wa of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that's not soul annihilationism. You're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever in the lake of fire. Okay? Okay. I heard, you know, there was a, a hermetic individual that I finally, I actually commented on one of his videos because some of his stuff is kind of, dude, okay? But um, people out there say, well, hell is immoral. Well, that's because you are elevating yourself above God. Okay, and you don't want judgment. You don't want to have an, uh, have anyone to give an account for the way you are. Okay, that's a different vi uh, video though. But I wanted to make this little, this little video uh, addressing that because that was a good question. That was a good question. That was I like that. And again, <laughs> again, um, if you are not who I think you are, I apologize. But if you are, several clues that make me think that way. But if you are, don't you got a sauna to go to anytime soon, buddy? Buddy. That's going to be it for this little video. Going to get this uploaded. Um, in the description box will be the, uh, actually it might only be the one. Um, just very, very few because, um, you know, we've covered this before, but I'm going to cover it again. So that was a good question. That was a good question. So thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you and we'll see you in the next video. Ouch. Bye-bye.